Good morning. I'm Mark Allen with Gaber.io, and I'm here today with Sam Watkins, the head of sales, account management, and learning at Refinitiv. Good afternoon, Sam. How are you doing? Hey, uh, doing well. Thanks. How's it going with you as well? And, thanks, uh, thanks. You, you, you're things are going good. Thanks for joining us. I see you've got a bunch of Nashville paraphernalia back there. Are you a Nashville native? Yeah, you, you got it. I uh, grew up and uh, raised in Nashville um, for many, many years, and so proud to represent my uh, my hometown. I, I live in Tampa now, but uh, every chance I can, I, I like to promote uh, promote my home city. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, are you a country music fan? Actually, I am. You know, I, I love all genres of music, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll note in my poster there's a one of the old cowboys uh, that's in the background there, but uh, yeah. that's what we were known for back in the uh, uh, original part of, of Nashville was country music. Yeah, no. there, and, uh, I think all I think, genres coming through now. <laughs> I think it's hard to live in Nashville and not like country music. I've been there and they have some of some of the most talented musicians I've ever seen in my life. You nailed it. It's, it's, it's kind of uh, almost like the LA of music uh, in that some of the uh, best musicians that you probably have never heard of are probably waiting on you um, at, yes. at a restaurant somewhere. Yeah, it was so, amazing. And then, and then they did. And then they got up and they stood on the bar and started singing. It was like... I just whirled away. Yeah, world-class talent. I got very, very swell when I lived here. I, I agree. So we'll, we'll, we'll get back on track here. So to start with, can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Sure. Um, so 20-some-odd um, plus years uh, in sales and uh, sales leadership um, experience. I started off the first 13 years of uh, my career in sales with uh, with a company, uh, Automatic Data Processing. Uh, learned how to sell there, carried a bag for a number of years and then moved into sales leadership and then um, sales enabled, uh, learning how to train and develop uh, uh, new sellers and existing sellers and uh, ran up the, uh, the ladder there in, in sales leadership uh, to a regional VP of sales and then finally uh, helped with their global leadership development program. After that, uh, moved out into a number of different other uh, uh, industries, uh, in and out of different uh, portfolio companies held by a, a variety of different uh, private equity firms doing sales transformation work. So something that's near and dear to my heart. And uh, you know, now I'm here at, uh, at Refinitiv, uh, which is uh, one of the world's largest providers of financial markets, data and infrastructure. We have, you know, we serve over 40,000 institutions in about 190 countries. And Leading the uh, the practice uh, for for the Americas for our uh, our sales and account management team, so it's been a real real exciting run. Well, that's impressive. So, with the sales background, I'm assuming you've had some experience with remote uh, work. Is that correct? I, I that would be fair to say. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, what has been your your experience, and and you know, just explain some of the remote work that you've done. Sure. You know, um, so my career has been one of a mixture of uh, both uh, on site, if you will, on premise and as well at times uh, coming back out and working uh, remote. And, uh, you know, when I initially this is over this 20 year career, uh, I, about 15 years ago before technology really uh, was uh, was uh, at a point where it allowed for me to do my job mm -hmm. in, in, in the manner that we do it now. Um, I, it was, it was a little bit disjarring, right? You know, uh, just being used to being in an environment to idea share or being around people, et cetera. I remember my first, uh, uh, my first moments of going in to, um, a remote environment were very off-putting and it, especially being in sales, you, you typically want to think that you're adding to the number, that you're being productive in some kind of way. And so, mm. you know, being able to be in an environment to, to have that, uh, to have that camaraderie and that sharing of ideas uh, really presented a really interesting uh, construct for me. But I quickly figured out that there were, more, there were different ways from a remote perspective um, of how to recreate some of the experiences that I, that I was getting inside of the, uh, the office or in-premise you know, perspective. And so mm. um, um, I've been able to leverage those, uh, those experiences over the years and um, with the uh, with the recent you know with with the recent environment with COVID et cetera, uh, it's been very helpful for me to help our organization as we're looking to navigate uh, through this new through this new environment. And I'm assuming since you're head of sales, that's one of your your the hats you wear. I mean, you have to deal with that today with the with the people that that report to you, correct? 
Yeah, well, you know, uh, and, and so full disclosure, so I, I don't carry a sales number right now. Okay. I actually, uh, you know, lead the development um, of those that carry numbers and, as well as the leaders. Uh, but having sat in their shoes, you know, I'm, I'm uniquely aware of precisely what's, uh, you know, what, what's forefront and behind for them. And so absolutely, as uh, the people that do report to me, we're, we're multi, uh, multinational uh, global organization. So um, working in a remote uh, fashion has become more of a necessity uh, than it has been of a luxury. Mm -hmm. um, as an example, uh, later on this evening, I will be taking a group of leaders through a, uh, a seminar uh, learning piece that are based out of APAC, um, out of Asia. Mm -hmm. So at 9 p.m. Eastern uh, tonight, I'll be working with approximately uh, 50, uh, 50 individuals all across the Pacific. And again, technology has allowed, uh, technology with moving into this environment has really allowed us to spread our wings in terms of how we're, we're able to communicate and add value. Right, and correct me if I'm wrong, it'll be 9 a.m. Thursday for them, correct? You nailed it, right. In, in Singapore and Hong Kong, it'll be 9 a.m. their way. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, very good. So what do you think is the future of remote employment and what do you think can be done differently to make it more effective? Um, you know, this has been something in my mind that ha it has been looming that was coming, uh, that the world was moving towards. And I've been having this idea again uh, for a number of years. And I think that uh, because of the COVID, you know, the COVID virus uh, and because of the, you know, the world having to adjust to this, what I would say is probably a concept that was 10 years out in the making has now been compressed down. And so here we are. And the world has shown some true resiliency in terms mm -hmm. of being able to adjust and, and, you know, and learn how to become, to stay productive and actually in some cases, uh, you know, actually become more productive. Uh, having said that, I, I think that once things normalize, um, once there is a you know vaccine that is uh, that is produced and, 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 and people can begin to uh, commingle again, um, I think that there'll be an opportunity for some hybrid sense mm -hmm. of of um, of, of uh, a virtual environment office. Um, mixed with, you know, flexibility that would allow for those that, uh, that have learned how to manage through and who have learned uh, to, you know, to become productive, uh, to take advantage of it. Yeah, I agree. I think people are ready right now to go back and, and have that personal connection. And I think at first that's what's going to happen. Everyone's going to go rush back to work. And after a couple of weeks, a month, people will be like, hey, you know, I can do both. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, you know, listen, you know, our, I know our organization, we're, we're doing a number of surveys and, and, and pulse points and really uh, looking at this from a very strategic manner about what makes sense. Yeah, uh, I think that the, uh, I don't know if I agree with some of the organizations who have gone full blown, you know, made a decision about, you know, we will never have an on-premise, on you know, right. presence. I'm not sure if that's the right mix, um, but um, I would say that, um, when you think about, you know, as we're moving into, an, you know, as we are squarely in a knowledge economy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and ultimately it's about, you know, ideas and sharing and being able to, um, you know, capitalize upon the intellectual property that, that, that individuals bring. Uh, that's always been really, why is it that people should be within proximity? Right. That in, 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 into decisions. Yeah. So I, I suspect that the companies that, uh, that are gonna win the war on talent you know, and that's always mm. been, you know, the buzzword right. for the past few years are the ones that are going to figure out, you know, what makes the most sense that would um, apply to the talent that we want, right? Yes. Because talent is the thing, the key that's going to help um, every organization get to their goal. Yeah, no, so, it's interesting you, you brought that up because, I mean, Twitter is the only large, you know, major company I know, especially tech company that said, we're shutting down, we're going 100% remote, where the yeah. other big tech companies have said, you have the option once everything right clears up. So, and I think that might actually be a competitive advantage because I think people do want that personal connection. You nailed it. You know, that it's, you know, you can, you can do a lot what you can um, for, uh, from a compensation perspective, or you can try to figure out, you know, what is it that you can do that, uh, that as perks, et cetera. But um, especially in, um, as we're transitioning workforce from a, from a generational perspective, you know, there, there, there are concepts that, uh, quite frankly, um, the generation that's upcoming, 
the new the new talent that's coming in the door that they're way more accustomed to. And so having that flexibility um, and having flexibility along a number of different dimensions is something that's uh, that's quite often cited from the studies um, about how do you go out and attract and retain that talent yes. uh, that's coming in the door. Yes, but it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out in 2021. So. What is the story behind Refinitiv? Um, you've talked about it. You're you're basically a data analytics company, but what what's the data analytics? Who is your target audience? You know, and and how do you help them? Yeah, sure. So um, you know, Refinitiv uh, began as uh, the finance and risk arm of Thomson Reuters. Um, you know, through a series of acquisitions, and and, and we spun out uh, and purchased by Blackstone uh, back in 2018, and so. Now, standing up the, uh, the, the, the brand under our own um, umbrella, we kind of tell ourselves as a, uh, you know, um, a, a $6 billion in revenue uh, mm -hmm. startup organization. <laughs> so it's, it's been, uh, you know, it's been real fun coming in, um, especially with a lot of the sales transformation work that I've done in the past for other um, organizations and looking at, you know, a lot of the success templates that are in play. Our solutions um, typically are aimed at those that are in the, uh, the the financial community, be it you know investment bankers or you know those that are in asset management, um, those that are in the trading space, uh, you know with foreign uh, with foreign uh, with FX, etc. And uh, inclusive of even um, standing up the indexes that um, and benchmarks that um, a lot of the stock exchanges um, uh, um, leverage in in, in uh, and that the uh, the people that interface with them um, use as well. So uh, being able to come in and take a look at how do we put ourselves in the minds of our customers? Mm -hmm. How do we align the value that data brings, right? And data is obviously in data analytics and you know, that, that's uh, some call it the new oil, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it is the thing that, that not only powers our financial systems around the globe, uh, but the insights derived there. And so ultimately it's how do we, um, ensure that our buyers and our customers are able to take full advantage of the uh, of this robust robust set of solutions and data we have one of the oldest and uh, most reliable data uh, 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 sets of data in in, in, in the uh, in the world and so being able to go in and have that level of um, of uh, confidence that you know uh, the information that is going in to help those uh, customers to make the critical decisions that they need to make um, along with that reliability, both speed and, 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 and the accuracy. It's very, very critical, right? Yeah, I'm, and if you're collecting FinTech data, that's a lot of data. <laughs> that's a lot of numbers, man, I tell you. Yeah, a lot of data. So, you know, we, 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 uh, we're able to provide it in, in multiple different ways um, and formats. You know, we have flexibility um, along the, uh, uh, along the, the uh, along the scale, we, we mm -hmm. provide it in the sense that if um, if a buyer wants uh, to leverage one of our preset solutions, if you will, um, and, and form, they can do that. Um, we have op open API, so mm -hmm. you know more and more increasingly, um, investment bankers are coming in with uh, not only uh, deep expertise and knowledge around financial engineering, but then also with coding skills, being able to go in um, and then take the data and, and uh, create the algorithms that you know mm. um, allow them to make their own um, their own um, customized solution sets. So we 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 offer our information out um, along with a code book that allows them to kind of get their hands dirty if they want that way. And then um, and then we do custom customized solutions for those that uh, that want to take advantage of our professional services as well. Wow, interesting. So you you actually allow customers to pull your data into their own data center. If you have an open API, correct? That is correct. Yeah, and so you know um, it, the financial you know the financial arena, especially in the banking community, they're very uh, more often than not you know it's the secret sauce, right? So uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of sensitivity around uh, keeping their 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 data and their information uh, confidential for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Right, and so we just want to make sure that we're there, we're positioned to be able to uh, to serve them the data or allow them to serve themselves with the data um, in a way that makes the most sense for them as well. Interesting. So, um, the ongoing pandemic forced you know pretty much the whole world to go remote uh, in mid March. Um, you, I mean, you worked remote for years, but did that cause any challenges or roadblocks for Refinitiv that they didn't expect or any of your customers? You know, yeah, um, it was interesting. I, I actually happened to be in New York uh, 
um, March the 13th, which was uh, the Friday of the week that New York shut down. Mm -hmm. And uh, our office is located in, uh, in Times Square. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm, I'm leaving, heading, about to get on a plane that evening to come back this way. And I remember going to my desk and thinking to myself, you know, I better take a couple of these things with me because I'm not quite sure when I'm going to be coming back here. And, you know, uh, looking back, it was a, it was a, it was a bit, uh, you know, uh, a bit pressing on my end. But when, uh, you know, when, when I landed uh, back into, uh, into Tampa that evening and then through that weekend on Monday, um, my, uh, my head of learning for the globe uh, gave me a call and he said, Hey man, listen, we've got a, we're going to put a shift on some of the things that we were thinking through mm. uh, for the quarter. And uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take um, our roughly 2,500 members uh, that uh, are across the globe, and we're going to uh, create a series of learnings um, that are going to um, allow them to get used to this, to this idea of you know, working in a remote fashion. Mm -hmm. We're also going to uh, you know, put some fun around it, if you will, that will be related to some of the production that we want them to, uh, to continue to focus upon mm -hmm. in terms of uh, their sales activities. And, uh, and we're going to get this thing trotted up and we're going to get it packaged up and we're going to get it out the door. And oh, by the way, we should probably get it done within the next, uh, call it 10 days. Let's wow. go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, to say, you know, and, and listen, you know, the, the team, this is really a, testi uh, a testimony to the team that we have. Um, and the talent that we have inside the building at Refinitive, especially with our, our, our learning and development team and our operations partners as well, that we got focused, we got very uh, creative with it, and we were able to trot out a 30-day um, um, program mm -hmm. that had every single seller um, and account manager focus on, you know, tidbits and, and grains of information they were getting served um, on a on a on a on a weekly basis you know mm -hmm. periodically and all of it was aimed at you know helping to, to figure out what tools were available to them how were they going to leverage those tools in their week-to-week -week activities and so phenomenal success you know we were just pleased as punch we thought it was going to be a temporary thing obviously still mm -hmm. uh back then but it's uh here on october the uh the 21st um you know the, the the investment has paid off in dividends and so we're, we're moving forward yeah and, and you're still remote now i would assume right and we're still and still remote now yeah we uh we uh, uh just as everyone right you know we're we're operating within uh within the rhythm of uh of uh, in the constraints of, of where we can operate you know inside mm -hmm. but right now our, our company still is is for the most part working remote and when you said 2500 members is that 2500 employees plus contractors that, that you know, no, two thousand five hundred sellers and uh, and, and and managers uh, in the sales oh, wow. and account management. Yeah. Oh, so you're a big company. We're a big company. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred and ninety countries we're represented in. Oh, yeah. so, and you said yeah. you called yourself a six billion dollar startup. I know a lot of CEOs of startups that would love to be a six billion dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, is it? Yeah, uh, it. There's a. Uh, obviously a little pun in that one, but yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's been a very successful organization, uh, a gym, if you will, um, standing, standing alone. So, yeah. yeah. Well, well, finally, there's companies like Gaper that help develop, build and scale products, especially for startups. I mean, we jokingly, you really aren't a startup, uh, but how important do you think this whole um, type of service, the ability to say, Hey, I need 10 developers or I need 10 marketing people will be going forward in, in this new economy. Yeah, you know, I think that um, there's an absolute play um, in terms of the expertise that um, organizations are going to be looking for, especially those that are um, that have that level of insight um, and that thought lead, uh, and then more importantly, you know, the uh, the, the hands right to to help frame up um, a lot of some of the infrastructure that would be needed to continue to evolve, you know, as as the evolutions evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, I think that one of the, uh, we, we know that when you think about information technology, when you think about, you know, um, um, anything that has to deal with, uh, with an organization's uh, resourcing um, as it relates to their digital footprint, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would, I would, I would, uh, I'd be shocked, right, if you found um, a CIO 
um, or someone who said, yeah, you know what, I want, I want to take my budget and my resource and aim it towards, uh, you know, inside type of activities, right? right? You, the, the name of the game is, what is it that you can do to help drive the revenue more right. often than not? Yeah. So I think that, you know, there, there's, a, a, there's a definite play uh, for, for companies such as yours that, um, and especially as you start looking at companies that are pressed for resource, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, that may not have that, that expertise and that availability at their disposal. So good so, times. Yeah. Well, Sam, I, I, I wish your $6 billion start of luck. <laughs> And I want to thank you <laughs> for your time today. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention, I see your Tennessee Titans helmet in the background and I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. So we are kind of rivals there, but I think we can both agree, not New England, right? That's right. That if there's nothing else that, uh, that, um, that I, we can wholeheartedly part as friends upon, then yes, uh, go Titans, go Bills, beat New England. That's right. And, and we have them coming up in two weeks. And I think you have them coming up in two weeks, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they're coming up on the schedule. So best of luck to you and, uh, you know, your, and your squad. And uh, it's good talking with you. Yeah, thank you. Have a great day. You as well. Take care. Bye.